You've seen the schedule. So let's not waste each other's time here because we don't have a lot of time doing the hard stuff that we need to do to get to where we want to go. This is about winning. It's about winning the world championship, period. It's time for another edition of the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy from inside the Globe Life studio here at the Star in Frisco. Bill Jones along with Cowboys head coach Mike McCarthy as the Cowboys take on the Kansas City Chiefs, a 325 kickoff on Sunday after a big win over Atlanta last week, 43-3. to Andy Reid in the Chiefs. Uh, it uh, doesn't take much to get up for this one when uh, you look at what the Chiefs have done the last few years. Uh, great coach, great football team. I mean, I did just what they've accomplished over the last three seasons speaks for itself. Uh, obviously played very well this past week against the Raiders. So uh, it's been fun going through, the, going through the tape. This is going to be a challenge. It's going to be a great atmosphere. Obviously, we're the second game Sunday. So... Um, <laughs> Hopefully we get some nice weather up there and we're looking forward to the challenge. Uh, so far the, the forecast looks pretty good for uh, Sunday afternoon. A 41-17 win for the Chiefs last week and they've gotten things back on track. They've won four out of the last five games. Of course, all starts with the quarterback, Patrick Mahomes. How big of a challenge is it defending him? Huge challenge. Uh, just the way he plays the game. Uh, you know, obviously when you look at their, their scheme, they're very explosive on what they do and how they do it and, and have the perimeter players to to accommodate that. But Patrick can make all the throws. Uh, just so confident uh, with the football. Uh, his ability to extend plays is is special. You know, I think we we have him where it's 20% uh, of the time, you know, particularly in drop back, the ball, you know, the ball is going to be extended, you know, bu above 2.3 seconds. So uh, huge challenge, hard to tackle. You know, we need to, you know, we need when we hit him, we got to get him on the ground, uh, you know, have some opportunities at the football. But um, he's really, really, really playing great this past month. Well, and you and you look at the weapons. Uh, let's start with the tight end. You had a pretty good tight end, a young tight end last week, and Kyle yeah. Pitts. Well, now you got a guy who uh, made the All-Decade team, Travis Kelsey, this week. Uh, definitely, this is going to be there's going to be three three games in a row where we're going to be talking <laughs> about tight ends. So, uh, Kelsey, I, I tell you, he, uh, su such a smooth athlete. Uh, just his uh, ability, obviously, connection with Patrick. Uh, you, can, you can see these guys have played a lot of football together. Uh, but his ability uh, for yards after catch is unique. He, I mean, he's, he's north and south, very slippery, uh, does a great job with the ball in his hands. He's a big target, uh, has a really good understanding of the pass game. So uh, obviously a target that we got to take care of. As far as your defense last week and the way it played, I thought Jordan Lewis uh, kind of set the tone for the game with his plays on Kyle Pitts early in that game. Definitely. Jordan was awesome. He was a game ball winner for the defense. Uh, just, just his energy and attitude. And, uh, you know, he's uh, you know, fun to be around. He's a great leader in the locker room. Uh, but he was definitely on fire against Atlanta. Okay, uh, Tyreek Hill. Here's a guy who's already got 75 catches on this season. Yeah. Uh, I think he totaled 17 touchdowns uh, last year. He's basically on that pace again this year. Incredible speed. What do you do to defend a guy like him? Well, he's got more speed. He has <laughs> speed, quickness, uh, you know, and he's obviously extremely confident. And you know, they're and they're going to do a lot to get the ball in his hands. Uh, you, you can see not only the the production, but the targets are way up here also. So I mean, feature player. Um, you know, we, we, we got to, you know, play to our leverage, play to our help. They are first in the league on third down. Uh, what, what are the main reasons that they've been so successful? Well, I, I think the biggest thing is just like anything, uh, that, you know, they're in favorable down distances. I mean, you look at their two to seven, uh, they're unique, uh, you know, just as particularly the flood patterns that they use. Um, but, you know, it, it, it starts with protection in the quarterback. So um, he's. An MVP player um, does does a phenomenal job of recognizing and diagnosing what you're doing, but his ability to extend plays is unique. Okay, we're just getting started on this edition of the Mike McCarthy Show. Up next, it's David Moore of the Dallas Morning News. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, is brought to you by AT&T, Ford, built for Texas, built for you. The University of North Texas, proud partner of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. And by Reliant, an NRG company. This segment is brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. 
The Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy, continues now here inside the Globe Life studio as I am joined by David Moore of the Dallas Morning News, SportsDayDFW.com. I'm amazed at just how different the reaction is when the head coach goes for it on fourth down when they make it on fourth down. Yeah, the, the fact they were three I know on fourth down this past game versus 0 for 4, so they were the previous game, does seem to change the tenor of the conversation a bit. But, I, I mean, the key here is this is just part of their DNA. You know, you, you look around the league, some coaches will go for it on fourth down because the game has unfolded that way. Mike McCarthy makes a conscious decision early in games, no, we're going to go for it on fourth down, so we hope this game unfolds differently. Uh, it's a much more proactive approach. And, and you look at the numbers going into the Kansas City game, Dallas has gone for it on fourth down 17 times. Uh, only three teams in the league have done it more, and none of them have a winning record. That indicates they're doing it out of desperation. It's part of Dallas's DNA, and, and I think the greatest example of that is 12 of those 17 times they've gone for it has been in the first half of a game. Uh, and they believe it leads to better decision making on third down. And, it, and it's just part of who they are. And, and that's not going to change. How much of a better read will we have on this Cowboys team if they come away with a victory at Arrowhead? Will the perception of this Cowboys team change nationally even? Oh, I, I think undoubtedly. I, I think right now they're viewed as kind of like right on the cusp of being, uh, you know, number one seed in the NFC, one of the better teams in, in the NFL. If they win this game, I don't, think the, I don't think you're discussing whether or not they're in the discussion. They are in the discussion at that point. Uh, and because, you know, and let's take another step. If they lose, it'll be like, well, they're right there. But, you know, they just lost on the road to Tampa Bay, just lost on, on the road to Kansas City. Yeah, they're right there, but they're not quite there. Uh, they win this game. I, I think it moves the, the goalpost on what the conversation is with them. All right, David Moore, we appreciate it. And up next here on the Mike McCarthy Show, a trip to the film room with Will McClay and Isaiah Stanback. So it's a, another football game. You know, every week's important in this league. Uh, you know, every team we play is a very good football team. And, uh, you know, if we go out there and uh, get, a, get a win on the road in a, in a hostile environment, you know, I think that would be a statement. This segment was brought to you by the Dallas Morning News. Nobody does sports like Sports Day. Your home for complete Dallas Cowboys coverage. This segment is brought to you by Windstar World Casino and Resort, the casino of the Dallas Cowboys. Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Will McClay is here with the Telestrator out. We're going to break down the Chiefs offense, and yes, they do have some stars on that offense. This might be the most entertaining segment you've done. It's not entertaining for a defense to go up against these guys. Yeah, we've got to be ready to go. and we got, This is what we're going to be uh, faced with stopping. We'll start with Travis Kelsey, security blanket. He's got over 50 catches, and he's the guy that the quarterback relies on. We're going to look at him here and in man-to-man -man coverages. He's a tough matchup because he's 6'5", he runs a 4'6". They're going to see it man coverage right here by the motion. They're going to try and disguise it a little bit, but Kelsey's going to – uh, going to attack one-on-one, -on -one, but the quarterback holds the safety. He knows he's got Kelsey man-to-man, -man, holds the safety there, and then he throws the ball up. Being 6'5", he's a mismatch against DBs, goes up and gets it. It looked like he was covered there, but as it turns out, they were able to, to execute the play. All right, here's another one with Kelsey. Here's, now, you can win on man routes. Now, you got to be able to be smart enough and win against zone. What they do is they set you up here. You've got the, the Hill is going to run. He's going to provide air in the defense. And then Kelsey's going to read the defense, okay, and know where to fit in zones. All right, so here we go. All right, we're going to get this thing rolling. They've got motion. They don't go. We know it's zone. He expands the defense, but and then Kelsey sits in the right hole to give the quarterback a target. Smart, savvy, veteran on the same page with the quarterback. How about Tyreek Hill? Speed, speed, speed. Hamstring buster. <laughs> All right, we're going to look at it right here. They're going to try and run a coverage where they pull the linebacker underneath and keep a safety over the top, but you get a chance to see his speed here. All right. When the ball is going to snap, you see we're going to highlight the linebacker. He's going to run underneath the coverage. Sure he is. And there's the speed and the separation, and that's just pure speed beating the defense. All right, here's another sample of why he was an all-decade player. All right. 
you uh, create space by using speed, but also the fear of speed and his unique ability to stop on a dime from running full speed. He's probably running 21, 22 miles an hour here, all right, but he's creating space. Watch what he does to the safety. Safety, I got to get out of here. He turns, he runs, and then he stops and look at all of the space again because of the use of that speed. Just creating space. All right, the guy that's delivering the football, Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes. When you look at an NFL quarterback, you talk about making throws in tight windows, and this guy does it uh, at the highest level. All right, we're just going to take a look at it, and you're going to see the velocity of the ball and the quickness at which he gets rid of it. Look, he hits his back step. There's a window, tight space throw. Boom, that thing's on the line. And we know of Patrick Mahomes' ability to extend plays in his athleticism. Most important thing you got to do when you rush, you got to have rush lanes. You got to keep them in the pocket. Not only do you got to contend with Hill and the backs and Kelsey, you've got to keep the quarterback in the pocket. Uh, not only will he run, but he does a great job of keeping his eyes downfield and using his weapons. Whoop, there you go. Makes a miss. Go, turns his back, still gets his vision, and then he finds the receiver running oh. across the field and throws a strike. Wow, that's uncanny ability, and that's what the Cowboys are facing on Sunday in Kansas City. Thanks to Will McClay. Let's hear what the Dallas defenders are saying about this. Oh, you just got to, you know, try to eliminate the big plays for sure. You know, um, that's how they get the offense going. You know, they like to go deep, more passing team. So try to stay on top of everything, make them check it down. Just Pat, Patrick Mahomes' ability just to get outside the pocket and extend plays, I mean, he just makes it so challenging for you to cover the whole field. And uh, he's pretty aware of the weapons he got, so he's just trying to give him extra time to get open. So it's important that we got all 11 guys stand on their key and get into the ball. And now we are joined by Isaiah Stanback with his Telestrator out to take an up-close look at how the Chiefs do it on offense. They do it very well on offense. Yes, they are, and they're picking up steam. We know everybody in the world knows how explosive this offense is, and they're just happening to be hitting their stride as they continue, as they get ready to prepare for the Cowboys. I'm going to show you guys a little bit of a background uh, behind the scenes look in terms of how they're creating these mismatches and finding these gaps. Man-to-man -man coverage is a bad deal because these guys are so fast. Playing zone like we're about to see here is also a bad deal, and let's understand why. First of all, I want you guys to see exactly if the main Main thing that you have to be able to do is create pressure up front. All right, we want to create, create pressure up front. You got to be able to protect up here. These guys want five guys blocking. We need to be able to bring more than five to cause this guy to move around in the pocket. But if you don't, then these guys are running concepts that are down the field. Okay, and what these guys like to do is they like to take their inside man and run him up to the high corner of the field. What does that do? That really clears out this linebacker right here. This guy who has his eyes in the backfield, he has to respect it. So what does he have to do? He has to back up and he has to fade away with that guy. What are you trying to, what are teams trying to do to go ahead and take advantage of this? These guys are taking his back safety and they're eyeing him up. So as he runs his route, they're helping, right, in a form of a double team by trying to take the safety and help there. That's awesome. Until you realize that the next man up is simply coming off the ball and shooting that same hole. So you got one man taking these two guys out to play, and then there's a big hole right here in the middle of the field where these guys are now saying, okay, you want to take away the deep threat? We'll take these five-yard dink and ducks, and we'll simply just run out the shoot like we see right here. So perfect right here. Take that man out. His eyes are no longer on the coverage. You got two guys taking one guy. What hole does that leave right here? A big gaping hole for Hardman right there. He takes the five-yard catch and takes this thing for another plus 20 yards. These are the problems that these guys present simply because of the concepts and also the personnel groupings. You have to respect them deep, but they are taking these little short plays and adding some yak yardage on it. Yards after catch, their problem. So many weapons for Patrick Mahomes to go to. Isaiah Stanback, we appreciate it. And up next here on the Mike McCarthy Show, let's talk Dak versus the Chiefs defense as the head coach rejoins us. Yeah, just our communication and our, our non-verbal non communication makes sure that we're all on the same page, all 11. Because uh, if, if we all are and we're communicating well, we're, we're a tough, tough group to stop. So uh, more so than anything, that's what it is. We go through the walkthroughs and practice, making sure that we're dialed in uh, to be our best in that aspect. 
Welcome back to the Mike McCarthy Show, powered by Reliant Energy. Inside the Globe Live studio, the coach rejoins us now as we talk about the matchup with the Kansas City Chiefs and their defense. Let's start with your offense and Dak Prescott and the way he played last week. I think you, you said it might have been one of his best games, if not his best game of the season. He was 18 out of 23 for over 200 yards and two touchdowns in the first half alone. What was the biggest thing that Dak did last week, in your opinion? Well, I, I just think not only with Dak, just you know the connection, you know, and the complimentary football that we played. But yeah, Dak was uh, total command. Uh, you know, the, I thought the timing of our passing game was was about as been, about as good as it could have been. Uh, you know, especially throughout the year. So um, I, I just you know love the way that he spread the ball around. Our, our ball distribution was outstanding. I think we were 65. Um, you know, completions plus uh, run attempts. Uh, you know, that's the fifth time I think this year we've been over 60 in the, in the area of ball distribution. So he's doing a great job just running the offense, don't press him, uh, just let, let the big plays come to him and, um, you know, just play at an extremely high level. You know, and sort of like we mentioned earlier in the show about Jordan Lewis setting the tone offensively, not only Dak, but CD getting involved right off the bat like that. It, it seemed to have that same kind of impact, uh, not only on the offense, but on the team in general. Yeah, definitely. I, I think if you look at CD's, you know, short history um, with our football team, when when he gets started early, it's a uh, it's a big day. So I mean, he was he was dynamite. I you know I, I really, you know, our, our team played very well. I mean, in all three phases, and uh, you know I, I think the the offense uh, really set the tone and. Defense, you know, with the turnovers, you know, that second quarter, you you, you were sure every second quarter would go like <laughs> 29 points. Yeah, so uh, and it just just the way they, you know, everybody just contributed and we took event, you know, took control of the football game. All right, how about this Chiefs uh, defense? Steve Spagnuolo, longtime yeah. defensive coordinator. There. You know, you look at their first five games this season, they were giving up uh, 33 points a game. Their last five games, they've won four of them. They're giving up 15.6 points per game. You can see the improvement as the season goes along. And you can see the pattern of what they're doing, too. So I, I think that, uh, you know, they got in some wild games and uh, the pressure and, and some of the things they were doing early, uh, I think that they have settled into, you know, who they want to be. And, and I think that's really – what this time of year brings, you know, by by the time you get to November, uh, you, you know, teams are established of you know how they want to play, um, you know, figured out their winning formula, you know, because it's it's different every year, your team's different every year, and um, you know, definitely, like I said, I, I think that Kansas City as a football team this last month has been playing at a very high level. Okay, uh, we uh, talk about offense, we talk about defense. Let's talk about Dorrance Armstrong, which will incorporate yeah. defense and special teams. Comes up with a block punt, third of the year for the special teams yeah. unit, and he had a sack in the game as well. Definitely, three in a row, actually three weeks in a row. So, yeah, Dorrance, uh, another game ball winner for uh, special teams. But, you know, he coming back off of IR, you know, I, I think it probably took, took two weeks for him to – Get back to where he felt, you know, totally 100%, and, and uh, played played extremely well in both the special teams and, and the pass rush. So had, you know, has a lot more opportunities with the injury to Randy Gregory, and uh, thought DA had a very fine football game. All right, we wrap up this edition of the Mike McCarthy Show in just a moment. I just wanted to tell him, you know, um, McCartney, Coach McCartney always saying how we're going to get the team's best shot. I was like, how about we give them, give them our best shot? Let's see if they can handle us. You know, let's shoot first and then see how they respond. And um, I think we came out fast. We came out pretty good and we kept it going the whole game. Final couple of minutes here of the Mike McCarthy Show powered by Reliant Energy. In this segment, a lot of times we talk about unsung stars. This guy's not really an unsung star, but I think the story is interesting from this past week. I'm talking Anthony Brown. You got to love the interception that he had. It was basically a pass deflection as well as an interception on the on the same play, the way he was able. And he gave a, a pregame speech that everybody's talking about, too. Yeah, it's, uh, Anthony's having a great year at number one. You know, I think he's been extremely consistent in his play. Obviously, that was, that was a big takeaway. Uh, just his focus throughout the play is, you know, definitely something you point to. But, you know, we have an opportunity for, for our, a selected captain to – to speak the final one minute before we, before we take the field, and, and Anthony just uh, was outstanding. I, and it, I think it resonated with everybody, and um, and it's it's always a great shot in the arm when, 
when one of our leaders steps up and, and delivers a message like that. And, and he, his message was basically, let's give them our best shot. Let's don't take their, their best shot. Let's give them our best shot, right? Good. Ro Rocks must have showed you the video. That's <laughs> no, definitely. It was a great message. And, and, you know, from a guy like him, too, because he's, he's, he's kind of a, a quiet guy. Yeah. And for him, especially now that I find out it was right before kickoff, for him to, to deliver that right there, it, it oh, resonated, yeah. I would uh, Definitely. I mean, just the ability to let that heart out of his chest and deliver the message. It was, it was outstanding. So it was felt by everybody. Okay. Good luck against Kansas City on Sunday afternoon. We appreciate all of you joining us here on the Mike McCarthy Show. And, of course, Cowboys back home for the annual Thanksgiving Day game on Thursday against the Raiders. We will see you next week. The Mike McCarthy Show, presented by Reliant, was brought to you by Ford. Built for Texas. Built for you. Bank of America, the official bank of the Dallas Cowboys. Miller Lite, the only beer of the Cowboys. It's Miller time. Geico, switch today and see all the ways you could save. And by NFL Game Pass. You'll never miss a game again. Enjoy full and condensed game replays from week one to the Super Bowl.